in the wake of these protests, in the wake, excuse me, of Jake of Blake shooting, there's widespread nationwide shockwaves. And they're not just going across people in the streets, it's people in the sports world. NBA players are set to meet this morning again to discuss how they're going to move forward with their playoffs amid reports that the Lakers and the Clippers have voted to boycott the rest of their season after the league postponed all three playoff games last night when the Milwaukee Bucks decided not to take to the court for game five against the Orlando Magic. Despite the overwhelming plea for change, there has been no action. So our focus today cannot be on basketball. We are calling for justice for Jacob Blake and demand the officers be held accountable. For this to occur, it is imperative for the Wisconsin state legislator to reconvene after months of inaction and take up meaningful measures to address issues of police accountability, brutality, and criminal justice reform. I spoke with Milwaukee Bucks owner last night, Mark Lazary. He tells me he fully supports the player's decision and that, quote, some things are bigger than basketball. NBC Sports' Mike Tirico joins us now. Um, Michael, this is extraordinary. It was almost four years ago to the day Colin mm-hmm. Kaepernick taking a knee suddenly got national attention. And now here we are. Yes, Steph, it's been an incredible four years for activism in sports. And really, over the last few months, you've seen it take a very different tone, starting with everything that happened post-George Floyd. Uh, I even saw just a few minutes ago, uh, a friend who I used to work with at ESPN, Adam Schefter, pointed out that the sports teams in Cleveland, the three professional sports teams, Major League Baseball, the Indians, the NBA's Cleveland Cavaliers, and the NFL's Cleveland Browns, are all coming together to figure out what they can do collectively in this area of racial injustice, the violence involved in communities, and all the social issues that are coming up. So sports is using its platform like never before in cities because athletes can reach fans, people who live in these cities, in a very different way because we see them. They represent the city. They'll wear Milwaukee or Cleveland on the front of their jerseys. So they're now using that voice for some power, which is uh, something we haven't seen used before in sports history. But this is also a lot different. It's not just enough is enough. Are the team owners and the league going to make donations to civil rights groups? The fact that there was a call from the Milwaukee Bucks locker room on the phone with the state attorney general and the Mm -hmm. lieutenant governor. Is that anything we've seen before? I mean, that is not the Laura Ingram shut up and dribble. This is real action. Well, they've stopped dribbling and they're they're starting to talk and they're talking to people who can be influential and enact change. And essentially, they're pointing to the inactivity of a state legislature. I thought of those comments that you just played. That was the most significant to me because it was very pointed and specific, specific, excuse me, to the place where these guys live. Remember, they're not from these cities. Most most of these athletes are not residents or natives of that area. They'll live there for three, five years. The good ones who stay for a long time will find a place to live afterwards. But by and large, they're only there for a short period of time, yet they're making perhaps a long-term impact on these cities. And the ability to use that platform to reach people in power is part of why protest can work and successful protests have in the past brought change. Now, this is a scale we've never seen before, and it's national because of the playoffs. And it's not just the NBA players, the WNBA players in their bubble, the Major League Soccer players, the three Major League Baseball games that were canceled yesterday, Naomi Osaka, outstanding tennis player who said she was going to not play her semifinal match at the tournament that's being played in New York right now. All of those folks are trying to do something that hasn't been done before in sports. And even though sports is not politics and can't change legislation and what happens, maybe these voices can put pressure on the folks out there to enact change. But we haven't ever seen sort of a collective voice like this before. The fact that all of these players are in the bubble together, they can have that players meeting last night and today. When you think back to Colin Kaepernick, the power resided with the team owners in the league Will he be punished? What will the team owners do now? The team owners and the league, they're in the back seat waiting to hear from the players and the players union. That's right. Without players, you don't have games. It's that simple. Uh, and they are using that power. So when people say, what did the Kaepernick protest do in the long run? Well, now we look four years out and we see what those seeds have now grown into. They've grown into these protests. Now, the question the players have when they meet this morning, Stephanie, and they said 11 a.m. was the time they were supposed to meet. Do they continue to play? 
some say that they are too hurt individually to continue on. They can't see this happen again. I can't speak to that. I have not gone through what they've experienced or what they're feeling personally. And every person has the right to their feelings and opinions. If you choose not to work or not to play, that's your choice. I do think as I step back, not emotionally involved, playing would be the best thing to continue to keep their message out there. The players have worn these messages on their jerseys. They've shown support by taking knees around the world in different sports. If after every game, when they're asked about the game, they answer the question but also talk about these issues, they'll keep the issue on the front burner. So I think by keeping their platform available might be the most impactful thing they can do going forward. Uh, I do want to share uh, some words last night from former player, superstar uh, Chris Webber, who had that mm -hmm. microphone and a platform and spoke to the country and people heard. Let's listen. We know nothing is going to change. We get it. If Martin Luther King got shot and risked his life, Mega Evers, if we've seen this and all of our heroes constantly taken down, we understand it's not going to end. But that does not mean, young men, that you don't do anything. Don't listen to these people telling you don't do anything because it's not going to end right away. You are starting something for the next generation and the next generation to take over. Do you have to be smart? Yes. Do you have to make sure that you have a plan? Yes. Do you have to be articulate about that plan? Yes. Michael, you've been covering sports for a long time. How did you feel when you saw that? How can, can you speak to the magnitude of this moment? You know, Steph, these athletes are using their platform in a way they never have before. They're speaking directly to the people who look up to them. And in many cases, that's the youth of America. They want them to know what they've been through. They want them to know what they've seen. And that's why th this is a powerful time. As we all know, these phones that everybody carries around, all the followers that people have, you can direct message with your statements. And when LeBron James has 78 million Instagram followers and many of these big name players have eight digit followings in social media, they can send these messages out. And the guys who want to be like them down the line or the young women who want to be like the WNBA players, they can read it and see it and they can feel their power. That wasn't the case in the Michael Jordan era or eras before. But now that direct connection is being used and the players who've been looked up to for a long time are now looking back and saying, hey, this is how we want you to activate yourselves, get involved in voting, get involved in your communities and help make change, help us make change. And for that, no matter what your feelings are, you have to applaud them because that's what America is really about. If we talk about all the conventions and all the rhetoric and all that other stuff, at the end of the day, there are freedoms out there. It's the freedom to band together as groups and get behind a cause and make change. If this is what they're doing, then they are putting their sports power to real power. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.